My Patreon is available once again. I'm offering Photoshop files for all of my art, which is very useful to view if you are a beginner or digital artist. What are Photoshop files, you may ask? Photoshop files are the files that contain the layers to my art. You can open them in any art program and you are able to look at the individual layers of the art. Why is this useful? Well, you can pretty much see the techniques I use for constructing my art, such as layer effects, you can see my sketches and how I plan everything, and you can individually see each effect layer. You can access all of my files for legit only $3, so that's a pretty good deal. For every art piece I release, I will also release a Photoshop file on my Patreon. So once again, if you're a beginner digital artist, I recommend heading there. Thank you for listening, and now on to the video. Hey what's up, it's me, your favorite artist you're obviously subscribed to, and welcome to 5 tips I tell literally every single beginner digital artist. These tips should be able to make it easier for you to draw, easier to find out your errors and stuff like that. Um, a lot of artists feel like their art is bad because it's their fault, but it's really not. Sometimes it's just the way your art program is set up, and I kind of want to help you with that. These tips are mostly aimed for like beginner beginners, but these may also help advanced artists as well, depending on like how good you are. So yeah, let's get right into it. The most common problem I hear artists talking about is why their line art looks super shaky. I always hear about like, I am I iron deficient? Do I need to exercise my arms? Why do I like, why is my line art so bad and wobbly? No, there's nothing wrong with you, don't worry. It's just because you have a key feature in your tool properties that is probably turned off, and that is called stabilization. What stabilization does is that it, cor it corrects your line work to be more smoother. I'm going to show you the difference between stabilization off and stabilization on. Now, once again, every art program is different, so I would recommend looking into your art program's help, fi uh, help support stuff and just looking up stabilization and seeing how it works. In Clip Studio Paint, Stabilization works from 0 to 100, with 100 being the most line correction. I typically use 15, but everyone has their different preference. So I'm just going to show you line work off and then on. So this is stabilization off, and now look what happens when I try to draw a simple line. Okay, that's really bad. Now let's turn stabilization to 15, which is once again my preference, and look how much better it feels and looks. That's 16. As you can see, it, it's much smoother. You can see these, you know, the line work looks much smoother. Over here, you can see uh, wobbles right here. Definitely a wobble right there. This is supposed to be a C shape, but apparently it went like this instead. And then over here, you can see if you don't really see much of a difference, then I recommend testing it out for yourself. You can definitely feel that there's like a difference between no stabilization and some stabilization. But yeah, once again, if your artwork looks wobbly, I would recommend turning this on. One thing I see beginner artists complain about too is how when they flip their canvas, everything just looks gross and uneven and they don't know how to fix it. Well, you know, you kind of just solved your own problem. One thing you need to start doing a lot often is constantly flipping your art horizontally. Now what this allows you to do is it allows you to check for like mistakes, like an unevenness, balance, stuff like that. Because if you don't do this a lot, then your art tends to look unbalanced and asymmetrical and just ugly. And I'll show you an example. So as you can see here, uh, this is a very old art piece of mine. And for this art piece, I never once flip horizontally. Now, you may think it looks fine, right? But let me flip horizontally and you're going to see that it feels completely unbalanced. Just like, it feels like he's looking this way and his eyes just feel crooked and then this part of his hair is just like, woo, woo. Now, yeah, this is why you should constantly flip your art horizontally. And if I were able to do this, I would be able to correct his face. You can see his, like, compared to his eyes, his, like, chin is very uneven. His nose is off-centered, and so is his mouth. And it's more following this curve. And you would be able to completely see that if I just flipped horizontally. With this one, too, if you flip horizontally, you can see that you notice that this eye is completely smaller than this eye. So, if I flipped it, I would notice that, and I would be able to easily just select it, grow it. Now, it may look completely disfigured now but at least they are now the same size so you may be wondering yourself how often should I flip my canvas to check for anomalies well every time you pretty much draw something so like let's say you finish the eye 
right away, you just want to check it. If you finish drawing the hair, right away, just check it. Finish drawing the ears, right away, just check it. You should be constantly doing it because if you don't, then you're going to create a sort of unbalanced feeling in your art. And when you flip it, it's going to look really bad. I'm going to freehand drawing a simple face and I'm going to show you what happens when you don't flip your art. So let's say I'm trying to draw like a face that's like looking this way and like he wants to look over to just his friend or something. We're going to just draw a simple face, but I'm not going to flip horizontally at least once. So I'm just going to draw a simple face and he's just happy. All right, that's it. That's all I'm going to draw. Now let's flip horizontally and oh my fucking God. What is this? What have I created? Now, as you can see, this way it looks fine, but this way, oh my god. So we're gonna fix that up. We're gonna fix his face right here. His face should be a lot closer to his eye. We're gonna fix this eye. We're gonna make it a lot bigger so that it actually is the same size as this eye. So look, now they're the same size. This nose should be farther out. And his mouth should not be that far in, so we're going to bring it like that. And now see, we managed to create an ugly guy into a pretty guy just from flipping horizontally. And now that's how, that's why you should use it, is to check for anomalies, unevenness, and a, like anything that feels unbalanced to you. Another thing I see people talk about is how to shade inside the line art. Now I know to you advanced artists, I might be very s simple but we're helping the beginners here now if you want to shade like color inside the liner but it's super hard for you this is what you can do so let's pretend we got our base color in i'm just going to quickly do this and just fill it in we got our base color there are two ways you can go about it it just really depends on your preference first of all you can make what is called a clipping layer which is when you make a new layer and you uh it's up here never mind and you clip to layer below now what this does is that everything you draw on this layer will only be visible to what you draw on the below layer. So look, I can't draw, oh shit. So, so look, I can't draw anything outside the layer that I already drew. So if I extend this layer, then I will be able to draw more. And on the layer below, if you try to draw more, then it's gonna show up to so you can see here so what this helps you do is that it helps you just stay between the lines you can fill in your base color which is probably the easiest thing to do and then if you want to shade it but you want to make sure it's in between the lines just set it to a clipping mode that is the wrong layer you cannot color outside the lines there's another way you can do it and that's called alpha locking now what that pretty much does it's just it's a button and pretty much any way that there's no pixels or pixels absent you just can't draw outside of it. There is a reason I prefer this method though, and that is because it's easier to mix your colors together. Now, this is because you're drawing basically on the same layer as the same color. As with the clipping layer, since it's on a different layer, your two colors will never be interacting with each other. So let's say I try to smudge a black with this, it's not gonna really smudge with the red because they're two different things. But the reason the alpha lock method will mix in with the black it's because these two are interacting since they're on the same layer i really hope i made that as simple as i can so basically because these two are on the same layer they interact but since these two are on different layers they will never interact with each other now these last two tips i want to talk about will probably help some you know advanced artists too um not maybe like to beginner advanced but they'll definitely help you out one thing I really hate beginners, like what they do, is that they zoom in when they draw. I know we've all done it, I know it's like easier to like focus, but please do not make it a habit to zoom in while drawing. This is a problem because you start to lose focus of the, you start to lose focus on the main big picture. So let's say I'm drawing an eye, uh, I'm just gonna quickly draw something here. So let's say I have a head, okay, and I want to draw the eye, and I want to zoom in because I I really need to focus on drawing this eye. So I'm zoomed in all the way here, so it's easier for me to draw an eye. Now, this eye might look fantastic, and because I zoomed in, it was super easier to do. But you zoom out, 
and it's just completely off. It's just, it, now it just looks bad. Like, when you zoom in, it looks super good, but when you zoom out, what the fuck? And that's because you're losing the fo you're losing focus on the main big picture and that's pretty important because every person who's not you drawing it is going to focus on the big picture you're the only one who's going to pay attention to details so when you draw what you want to do is zoom out when you draw pretend like you're drawing on a piece of paper because then you can start focusing on the bigger picture you can focus on like oh are people going to be able to see this and then you can start focusing on like the actual proportions and making sure that everything looks like it's supposed to instead of focusing on one thing at a time. It's easier just to focus on everything at the same time than just one thing and then zooming out. It's pretty much worse to put details into one thing that people are gonna barely notice and then zooming out and just realizing it looks really bad. You just need the full picture of the art to make sure that everything looks good. So as you can see here, I'm zoomed out and I it's easy for me to tell where everything is, how sized everything is, if everything looks good, and it just makes the whole art process a lot easier and you'll just thank me for it. As you can see here, I just drew myself. Easier to not lose the big picture. Now I'm going to pretty much do what I just did there, but zoom in all the way and just show you how like hard it is to focus on how good it looks when you're zoomed all the way in. So let's see. I got to make sure I draw the eye, you know, because the eye is very important. I got to get all these details in. Oh, dude, I really hope this eye, this eye just looks amazing when it's zoomed in. Oh, dude, that looks amazing. Oh, now I got to draw the other eye. All right, let's do, let's draw the other eye here. I really hope that looks uh, proportional with each other. Uh, gotta make sure I'm zoomed in. Uh, yeah, those are the eyelashes right there. Gotta draw the eyelid and then the eyebrow. Oh, but I also forgot the ear parts. Okay, the ear parts aren't that hard. I just usually do that. Oh, but I also gotta draw the hair. Let me make sure I'm zoomed all the way for this. Zoomed all the way in. All right. Oh shit, this is kind of hard. This is actually kind of really hard. <laughs> All right, let me make sure I got the, the source point up here. Got to make sure I can draw up here. Oh, yeah, I got the, I got I need those. Got to make sure you got the space in between so his head doesn't look flat. Oh, yeah, I also got to have his head over here. Head over here. Got to make sure it looks big. And, yeah, I'm done. Oh, I forgot his nose. His nose, his little thing, and then his big goofy smile. Oh, shit. Okay, uh, I made his mouth a little too big. His eyes are kind of, you know, uneven. This one's definitely, like, bigger than that one. And then his hair on top is a little too flat. So as you can see there, uh, kind of a big comparison to when you zoom in all the way versus when you zoom out all the way. Uh, a really big problem I personally have is zooming in still when I'm doing line art, and that kind of, like, makes it look really bad, which is why I don't like to do eye line art. I gotta still practice that shit. But yeah, just remember, pretend like you're drawing on a piece of paper, okay? It's really easy to lose focus of the big picture, try to make all those little cute details, but when you zoom out, it just really looks bad and unnecessary. So, once again, don't make it a habit to zoom in all the way. You can do it periodically once in a while. You can zoom in, obviously, when you gotta get, like, highlights and you gotta get, like, a precise location on it. But just don't make it a big habit, okay? When you're sketching, especially, don't not make it a big habit. If you also don't know what to start at, usually what I do is that I have like a simple brush without pen pressure. I set it to four pixels. Four pixels right here. Uh, I set my canvas to 3000 by 3000 and then I have it at 100% zoomed. Uh, this is just in case you don't know what to start at and you don't know what resolution is good for you. This is usually my main setup and this is usually how I draw. And then I usually just draw my heads this big and all that. That's just in case you don't know what resolution to draw it and shit, because some people do it differently. That's just my preference. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about solely my basic brush. This brush has been wonderful for me. And you want to know why? Because it keeps all my sketches clean. Now, one thing that beginners also really love to do is to have really, really messy sketches and you see them do stuff like this. 
So like this is supposed to be a head. Now, I'm not trying to sh throw shade at you beginner artists, okay? I obviously, I did this too. This is why I'm telling you this. Um, so basically, what beginners like to do is that they like to thickly sketch everything and do the most, like, short lines and just, like, make sup something super messy that it just loses its meaning. Now, what this brush allows me to do is that it helps me practice doing long, simple, clean lines. And so basically, this is literally what I do for a head. Boop, 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 mew, beep, no, beep, fuck, beep, beep, ear. Now, what would you have, what would you rather have for a sketch? This messy abomination or something super clean? You're probably saying the clean one. So, yeah, this is why I really love this brush because this. Because with this brush, you don't really have to focus on opacity. You don't have to focus on whether like your lines are super thick in one place. If the line pressure looks weird in one place, you, oh fuck. It's super easy just to solely focus on the shape of your art. And that's pretty much what a, sh a sketch should be. A sole focus on the shapes, on the, you know, on your planning. A sketch should be easy to, it should be easy to read basically. Like, you can be a little messy, but make sure that it's easy to read. And that's basically what this brush allows me to do. And basically, it's just, it's its not even that hard to do. It's basically just a brush with, uh, whatever this is, an medium anti-aliasing, 100 density, absolutely no pen pressure in either density or brush size. Here is my beginning sketch, as you can see. Okay, yeah, it's a little messy. I know, I'm sorry. I know I just kind of contra contradicted myself, but at least it's still eligible or illegible to read and stuff, okay? I still know where the legs are. I still know where the body is. And to be fair, I created a second sketch to, you know, clean it up. And as you can see for this one, for my tool, it, it looks super easy to read. Super simple strokes allows me to understand how my character should be posed, how she should look, and stuff like that. Where her legs are. For my second, for my last sketch, what I did was this. And you can see this definitely looks way better. And still, I'm using the same pen. This is still a sketch too, because this is this was just for planning. Now, I was going to make this into a full drawing, but I kind of lost motivation, so I just colored it. So, here is the full coloring. And see? Even just as a sketch, it still looks super good. Like, you're not losing anything with this. It, it, what you're doing, what you're like gaining the simplicity of it and being able to read it and understand what your shapes should look like. Once again, you see these two drawings? Guess what? I use this brush and I'm only focusing on the shape and not the line pressure or density of my lines. As you can see here, the, the same brush. It's just... See? Just a super easy brush to use when you just want to focus on the shape of your art and not the per like the pen pressure or anything too spiffy. As you can see here too, I am also just using this brush. All right, it's a little messy here, but yeah. So I recommend basically this brush to any artist that doesn't really want to focus on the the specialties of line art, how to make line pressure, stuff like that. If you just want to sketch and just color your sketch, use this brush. It's easy to use. It's simple. Don't have to focus on line pressure, no density. And you can solely practice on, you know, like your art style and being able to like, um, just focus on the shape of your art. Once again, the fucking brush is literally just no line pressure, no art density, nothing special. It's just 15 stabilization, 100 density, medium anti-aliasing. You don't even need to pay attention to that. Just make sure it has no pen pressure. But yeah, something, just a simple brush like this can really help you figure out your art style easy. It can help you focus on the more important stuff like being able to convey shape through your art. And, you know, just all that. So yeah. So that's the end of the video. If you really like that, be sure to give it a thumbs up. You know, I'm always teaching tutorials. You know, I'm trying to post every Saturday because... I'm out of school. You can post more. And yeah. 
So thank you so much for watching. I know this was a short video, but uh, I really wanted to make this. So yeah, um, have a good day and I'll see you all next time.